three, two, one. It's the Puff and Step Podcast. My friends, we are back on your listening device. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to listen to us. It is Puff. It is Steph. Hey, everybody. Oh, hey, Steph. Welcome to the show. Hey, you welcome to the show. Uh, okay. <laughs> I wanted to welcome you, too. Oh, because I'm always the one doing the welcoming? Right. It's my turn. Puff, welcome. How are you? Good. I'm good. Thank you very much for asking. You asked me first, too, which is crazy. Um, I'm doing well. Steph, you'd be so proud of me. I bought a home gym thing off Amazon. Nuh-uh. So what all does it include? So it's it's like, ever see one of those like uh, bow and arrow workout sets? Yes. I bought one of those off of Amazon, and I've been using it, and I feel swole. That's so cool. I remember you showing that to me a while ago because you were looking at getting it. Mm -hmm. So now I have an exercise bike in my house and things where I can do strength training. That's really nice. So it's like something that you can do like resistance. Yeah. So it comes with resistance bands and you can do a plethora of different exercises, everything from squats to curls, back and buys and chest. And I mean, pretty much everything you can do. It has all these instructional videos. It's, I never have to set foot in a gym again. That's awesome. Oh, I'm so jealous. My neighbors are building a gym in their basement right now. And I'm thinking about inviting myself to use it. (laughs) Uh, I have a a feeling they'll invite you. (laughs) Is it the guy neighbors? Yes. Oh yeah. You'll be invited. (laughs) I hope so. I miss the gym. So that's really cool. I'm jealous. Yeah. So I, I was like, feeling like because i don't run like you go out and you run that's not something i do even when i was in the best shape of my life i was never like hey i'm gonna go out for a run <laughs> no that's just not who i am right. um i don't mind the gym but now even if i wanted to go you know full well they're closed so i mean some are opening up slowly and we could see them open you know soon but i said you know what even when this is over i don't want to go to the gym because the gym's going to be like how it is at new year Oh my gosh, I didn't even think about that. It'll be a nightmare. And if we have to like wear masks and stuff, it's gonna be so weird. I don't think they'll make you do that because I don't think that's safe, but you never know. You never right. know. Um, so I said, how can I make it so I never have to set foot in the gym again? This is how. I, we'll see. Now, here's the thing. I've only used it for a couple of days. I might get sick of it. It might break. I mean, who knows? I don't know. But if you can do that many different workouts with it, you're set. You don't really have to go to the gym anymore and especially now that i have the bike too so i have the the exercise bike and this strength training i really don't have to have to go to the gym that's awesome yeah i'm getting sick of running i wish i had like a piece of cardio equipment but we do have a punching bag and i love that thing like that's the best so at least i have that that's a good workout too that's one thing i don't have so there you go you got me beat although now i might get one and put it in the garage Thanks for the idea. And then I'll have everything that you have and more. (laughs) All right. uh, A poll of 2,000 Americans by the skin company CeraVe, one of my favorite skin companies, uh, found that the average person makes six excuses a day. Talking about working out. Excuses and anything. Uh, Hang out with friends. Do this work. Do that work. Work out. Whatever. I want to know if you've used these excuses. I can tell you that I have used... All of them. Guilty. <laughs> All right. There's five. They make six, ex- sk- six excuses a day. Here's the five most common. I'm too tired. Yep. Yep. Been there. I don't have enough money. Yep. That might be an excuse, but it's also true. <laughs> oh, so these can absolutely be true. I never said these were fake or you were lying. I don't have enough time. Yep. Yep. It's too inconvenient. That's kind of a... I almost would rather use a different excuse and lie than say that's too inconvenient. It almost makes you seem like a jerk. Right. And maybe kind of like lazy. Right. So like, let's say your friend, like you just went hiking uh, last week in Gettysburg. Let's say, now, did you guys drive together or did you meet there? Um, We like met halfway and went together. Okay. So like, let's say um, it was more like, hey, meet me there. And that's, you know, that's an hour out of, you know, out of your way. And you're like, that, like, that's really inconvenient to you. Let's say, especially since she would have to drive by your house to get there or you drive by her house. It'd be better for you guys to go together. But because of this reason or that reason, your friend doesn't want to drive together. 
and you say in your mind, oh, that's really inconvenient. But you say, um, my car is broken. Can we take yours? I'll give you gas money or something like that. Right. A different excuse. Like, have you ever used an excuse of that's too inconvenient? I don't think so. Cause I think like you said, I would feel like a jerk saying that. <laughs> yeah. It's not just you. It's everyone. Uh, I forgot. Also made the list. That's bad. I've never used that one. I have. Cause I've legitimately forgot. Like about plans with friends. Mm, yeah. Or meetings. Um, yeah, I forgot. I've, 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 I'm human stuff. I make mistakes. God, would you stop judging me? Do you know what I'm going to say to that response? It wouldn't happen, Puff, if you had a planner, a color-coded planner with little stupid tabs on the side. <laughs> They're not stupid tabs. They are color-coded and very convenient. So, yes, that's what I was going to say. I'm sure you've forgotten things before. Um, Probably little things, but nothing big, I don't think, because it's in my planner. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Uh, being a senior right now in 2020, very tough. A lot of schools are canceling graduations, trying to have virtual ones. None of it's really going to be the same as walking across that stage. Here's a really unique solution. Seniors at Kennett High School in North Conway, New Hampshire, will each be riding up the chairlift to the summit of Cranmore Mountain. Students will ride in every other chair to the top, get their diploma, have a couple of pictures taken at the top of the mountain, and then come down. Ooh, that's cool. That's yeah. even cooler than a normal graduation ceremony. So they live in a ski town. Uh, they graduate on top of a mountain by chairlift. Okay. That's really cool. The, see, that's better than a normal ceremony. I think so, too. The problem I see, of course, I always have to look at a negative side of things. Uh, just because they live in a ski town doesn't mean every kid skis. True. So, have you been skiing before? Um, Actually, no. My brother does it, but I haven't. No, I haven't. When you get to the top of the chairlift, you have to glide off down a small hill. So you have to know at least a little bit of uh, about skiing or have a little bit of coordination. Think about all the people you went to high school with, okay? You're thinking in your mind right now the people who would fall on their butt coming oh, off definitely. that chair. Who, who have zero athletic ability whatsoever. And even if you do, maybe it's not the right kind of athletic ability. Just because you're good running a football into the end zone doesn't mean you put two sticks on your feet and you're good at gliding. Right. So these kids are actually going to be wearing skis on their feet. I think so. I don't know how else you come off the chairlift and rather than just jump. Maybe they'll have a special platform made. That's very possible. I don't have too many details about that. Maybe you just kind of hop off and come down the platform. Uh, but yeah, I, they might also have to ski off the chairlift. Wow. Yeah, I want to see this. I hope they videotape it. Oh, I'm sure it will be videotaped. Coming up in just a couple of minutes, it is back. The advice column. Ready to help out some people? Let's do this. It's the Puff and Steph podcast. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Everyone is going through something right now, and we're all in this together. That's why CBD American Shaman of PA is looking out for you and your health. During this trying time, CBD American Shaman of PA is focused on safety and the needs of their customers. That's why right now they're offering curbside pickup along with home deliveries. Let American Shaman help you manage these stressful times. To find out how to get high quality CBD products and a free bottle of Shaman cleansing gel without even leaving your car or home, visit HempisHealth.com. Hey honey, how are the taxes going? Pretty good. Let's see. We either get $800 back or we owe four grand. Hmm. I 
think we should call H&R Block. Let's face it, taxes can be confusing and the laws seem to change every year. Let the professionals at your local H&R Block take the worry out of your tax season. H&R Block in Dillsburg, Newville, Biglerville, Fairfield, and Gettysburg have been owned by the same family for over 50 years. And they've been there for every tax law change along the way. Don't leave money on the table. File your taxes confidently with H&R Block. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy. No websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. We do it every single Thursday. It is the Puff and Steph advice column. You guys write in with your problems, and uh, Steph and I do our best to not screw up your entire life. We try. (laughs) That's our goal. I'm not even really in it to solve your problem. I'm just really trying hard not to land you in prison or alone or in some sort of deep, deep depression because you took advice from people on a podcast and you thought that that was gospel. So you're hoping that we don't make it worse, basically. If I can do these every week and not make someone's life worse, I will consider myself and what we're doing a success. Success. Right. However, if two years down the line, we run into Dave and we completely ruin Dave's life because of something we said, um, I'm going to be like, wow, um, I'm glad we stopped doing that. Because I'm assuming we won't do this forever. But, uh, yeah, Dave, if you're listening, you know, our bad. Poor Dave. Yeah. Anyway, this comes to us this week from Kim. Dear Puff and Steph, I'm interested to see what your thoughts are on my situation. Back in college, I had a guy I was good friends with. In parentheses, genuinely just friends. That's Uh, what they all say. Okay, so you friend zoned a dude. Then what? He dated one of my girlfriends. They were together for a while. We all hung out and things were great. Things ended up not working out between them. And he and I grew apart because I naturally kind of took the side of my girlfriend. Their breakup wasn't horrible or anything, but like with most breakups, it wasn't that great. He and I haven't talked for two years, but recently I ran into him at the store and we reconnected. Is it wrong for me to hang out with him and get close again? Again, in parentheses, strictly as friends. Or is it that, or is it that like betraying my girlfriend? Okay, so I, so is it betraying the girlfriend? Some time has passed, so I feel like it should be all good, but I'm still feeling conflicted. Thank you guys for any advice you can offer. Very excited to hear what you guys think from an outside perspective. Sincerely, Kim. Uh, Kim, you should stop being a hussy, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> oh, Kim. Kim, your friend trusted you to have her back, and all these years later, you just you just bided your time. You're just like, I'm going to play it cool. I'm just going to act like I don't want to be friends with him anymore. I just can't wait to run it, run into him at the store. You know, how many years later during a pandemic? I don't even know if it happened during the pandemic. Anyway, and uh, I'm gonna I'm going to get back into friend zone with him. All right. We're on to you, Kim. We know what you're doing. Um, is this something that girls legitimately worry about? Um, I think so. I think it's a tough position because if that girl that you're close with and you're still friends with her, you don't want her to be like, well, why are you hanging out with Johnny now? You know that he hurt me and things didn't go well. Like, I feel like that could be, like, something that a friend shouldn't do to another friend. But if they're genuinely just, like, friendly with each other, I think it's innocent. Yeah. I, I Personally, I read this and I go, so what? Like, you were friends with him. From what I gather, you were good friends with him before you and – before him and your friend got together. Okay. Is that what it was? Right. So, would it be different – if you weren't friends with him at first, maybe a little. It might be a little bit different, right? But because you were friends with him, you friend zoned him long before uh, those two got together, I think you're well within your rights to not even wait this long. 
Like, you could have stayed friends with him unless he did something awful to your friend, which it doesn't seem like he did. I think, like I said, I think for me, this is pretty cut and dry. The only thing that would have changed anything is if he cheated on her or worse, or if uh, you weren't friends with him before. Then I would. Then I think this would be a little bit harder of a question. But for me personally, I, I don't. I don't really see an issue. Right. It it is a tough position to be in though, because you want your friend to feel like you have her back, and I don't know. I get it being a girl, because like this was in high school, so like I was at a different point in my life and a different maturity level. But I know whenever my high school boyfriend and I broke up, we had a big friend group, and some of my girlfriends continued to be friends with him. How dare they? How dare they? How dare they? Shut up. I never held it against them, but it, it, it's hard. Like, it's, I mean, especially when you're at that age, like, it, it's hard to see. Like, it kind of sucks. So I think that you're just being such a dude about it, and you're like, what's the big deal? But it, it is kind of a hard position. I get it. You think I'm being such a dude about it? Yeah, you're like, I don't see what the big deal is. Wow. That was, that last <laughs> minute and a half was so unlike Steph. Number one, you told me to shut up. <laughs> Number two, you I mean, I don't know if that was an insult or what. No, you were just being a dude. It's not an insult. You're a guy. I get it. I'm just saying from a girl's point of view, um, I it's just I get where she's coming from. But I do think that they could still be friends. Now I'm gonna assume because Kim hit us up that she's still friends with that girl. Because if she wasn't friends with that girl, then this I don't think would be a big deal. Right. Here's the key, Kim. Here is the key to all of this. Tell her. Tell her. Right. Because if you don't and she finds out, she's going to feel like you're hiding this from her. Right. Like if, yeah. And it's going to leave. Is that, does that sound like a dude? <laughs> I wasn't making fun of you. I really think it's different. What, regardless of what anybody wants to say, it is different when you're a guy and when you're a girl. The emotions are different. It's just, it's completely different. It's not anybody's fault. I really wasn't like knocking on you. Um, but I think you're right. Cause if, if her friend just randomly sees them hanging out on an Instagram story or something, she might be like, well, what's going on there? Yeah. And girls, I think worse than guys and maybe I'm wrong, but girls hold grudges. Girls hold grudges. Like, guys, if they have a problem, they usually talk or fight or something, and the problem is squashed or whatever. Yep. Gr girls will be like, oh, well, I'm going to play a long game, and I'm uh, just going to hate her for years and years and years and years and years and years. And then when we're, like, 40, I'm going to let it all out while we're drinking wine one night, and I'm going to hate her and never talk to her again. See, that's why this is complicated. Um, so, so Kim, you have to tell your friend. She'd be like, hey, you want to know something weird? I ran into, what did we call this guy? Did we give him a name? I think I said Was Johnny. Johnny, okay. <laughs> hey, I ran into Johnny out of, you know, at the store. I recognize, remember he had that weird part in his hair? I couldn't see his face because he's wearing a mask. We were both shopping. But he had that weird part. He still has that. Or that weird cowlick that Johnny always had. Yeah, he still has that. Uh, so that's how I knew it was him. So I couldn't like go up and talk to him. So I threw uh, I threw a, a packet of cheese at him because I had to stay six feet away. But I threw a pack of cheese at him to get his attention uh, in the store. And then we just kind of had a loud conversation because we couldn't get close. <laughs> and we caught up. How's it going? Johnny, is that you? It is me, Kim. How how you been? Oh, it's, uh, it is me, Kim. How have you been? Hey, I've been great, Johnny. Hey, did, do you know? Are you married? No, I'm not married. How about you? No, I'm not married. Hey, it's been so long. <laughs> that sounds about right. That, that that's the grocery store conversations going on in America right now. Uh, yep. Yeah. So I, personally, Kim, I see nothing wrong with this. Don't be guilty. Don't let it keep you up at night. Just to avoid all issues, tell your friend. That's all. Right. Just tell your friend. I agree. If you tell your friend, all your bases are covered. You can continue to have this guy in the friend zone for years. Everything's good. Um, and, 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 you know, we're all, we're all set. So, hey. Coming up next, 
I will never, ever, 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 ever buy these ever. It's the Puff and Steph podcast. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Everyone is going through something right now, and we're all in this together. That's why CBD American Shaman of PA is looking out for you and your health. During this trying time, CBD American Shaman of PA is focused on safety and the needs of their customers. That's why right now they're offering curbside pickup along with home deliveries. Let American Shaman help you manage these stressful times. To find out how to get high-quality CBD products and a free bottle of Shaman cleansing gel without even leaving your car or home, visit HempisHealth.com. Hey, honey, how are the taxes going? Pretty good. Let's see. We either get $800 back or we owe four grand. Hmm. I think we should call H&R Block. Let's face it. Taxes can be confusing and the laws seem to change every year. Let the professionals at your local H&R Block take the worry out of your tax season. H&R Block in Dillsburg, Newville, Biglerville, Fairfield, and Gettysburg have been owned by the same family for over 50 years. And they've been there for every tax law change along the way. Don't leave money on the table. File your taxes confidently with H&R Block. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy. No websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. An LA-based clothing realtor. Uh, I don't want to. How do we say this? It's Canava. I think that's how you pronounce it. Has released a line of limited edition ladies underpants. Now I said I would never ever wear these ever, and that's the truth. And not because they're ladies. If they made male versions of these, I wouldn't wear them either. But they feature the names. So Steph, you're a lady. Think about, uh, would you wear, let's talk about your underwear for a second. Uh, would you wear this underwear? They had the names of New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, California Governor Gavin Newsom, and government immunologist uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci. Uh, they apparently, they're calling them heroes of the pandemic underwear. <laughs> would you wear underwear with a guy's name on it? No. Also, no, you know, we were just talking the other day about like the underwear that had the days of the week that I used to have. I don't anymore. I'm, I grew out of that like five years ago. Wait, um, what? But I would <laughs> like they were like they were on there. That's how you bought them. Yeah, like it would say like Monday, 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 Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. And you Tuesday. would wear them. Yeah, and what? sometimes I would wear them on the wrong day of the week. Oh, just to I was going to ask you because I don't see you being that person that would wear those on the wrong on the wrong day. Like Sometimes. Like, ah, oh, Tuesdays are my only clean pair, but it's Thursday. Well, <laughs> guess I'm going commando. Yep, I used to sometimes switch it up just to be a little crazy. Um, so I would wear those, but not dudes' names, no. I just don't understand why anyone would wear these. The Fauci's come in bikini brief style. The Cuomo's are lower cut undies, and the Newsom's are described as hipster briefs. The company, oh. yeah. The company says they'll match dollar for dollar your purchase with the equal product donation to healthcare workers. Okay, so they're not donating money; they're donating products. So, Steph, if you go and buy the Fauci bikini brief style, that means some nurse somewhere will also receive a free pair of Fauci's. Oh, so they're donating underwear when you buy underwear. That's that's <laughs> just so amazing of them. I don't like. I could. I can tell you right now, I don't like this company. This is not, I don't like them. I don't care who's on their underwear. You're not going to buy any for the wife? No, I don't think she would wear them. I'm definitely not going to wear them uh, if they came out with men's ones or ladies ones. I mean, what you want to do with your underwear is your business. Um, but yeah, that's uh, this isn't my thing. 
Yeah, no, I'm not feeling it. This not is making the rounds it. online. A father in England turned his whole home into an enormous ball pit. His name is Joel. He likes pulling stunts and practical jokes on his four daughters and posting them all on YouTube. Uh, stuck at home during the lockdown, he came up with the ultimate childhood fantasy. He got his hands on 250,000 plastic balls and put them all in his downstairs of his house to create a giant playground ball pit uh, for his family. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, where did he get all them from? Who I, just finds them? I don't know. I don't know. He filmed the scene as his daughters walked in on the ballroom uh, before his wife. He says everything was worth just for their reaction. Now, they took the ball pits out of a lot of places because they're filthy. I mean, that's why you don't see them in Chuck E. Cheese anymore. They're disgusting. I know, but they're so fun. It's a shame. It's sick. You, do you even like want to know what they found on those balls when they did studies? Probably not, but I feel like a lot of stuff in Chuck E. Cheese type places is that way, you know? Yeah, okay. It's kids. So they found germs, bacteria, fecal matter, Ew. urine. I mean, you name it. Just think uh. about it. Kids are gross. Kids are gross. I was gross. You were gross. We were all gross. I'm not knocking kids. They're just gross. So, True. No. so they go to the bathroom. They don't wash their hands. They come out and jump in the ball pit because it's fun. <laughs> so like I went to a bar in Philadelphia with some friends like two or three St. Paddy's days ago. And there was a bar that was actually like a playground with a ball pit. And in the ball pit was like s giant swim uh, pool floaties. Like there was a giant shark you could jump on and be on the ball pit and stuff like that. It was very cool. Uh, a friend of mine jumped in. They're like, hey, Puff, you jump it in. And all I could think of was the gross, disgusting balls that used to be at Chuck E. Cheese. And I went, I'm good. I'm going to go get a beer. And you didn't? You I missed did. that opportunity? And you know what? Not a day goes by where I regret it. That was the right decision. I should not have done it. That so was, you're proud of your decision. That was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. Wow, you really hate you really feel strongly about ball pits. I didn't yeah. know. So I want to believe that this dad had all the balls disinfected before they were in his house. Maybe they're brand new balls. I don't know. Good idea. The balls give me the heebie jeebies though. Alright, time to stump Steph. According to studies, women think they need to do this more than men, and they do it more often than men. What is it? So not only do they think they need to do this, they actually do it more than men. What is it? Shaving. Nope. It's nothing physical. Like it's not shaving or exercising, running, anything like that. Cool. So it has nothing to do with like their hygiene or health. Correct. Okay. Correct. Ah, something they need to do. Do you do this? When the time calls for it, yes. It's not hygiene. Does the wife do it more? You know what? I don't know if she does it more. I I don't know. That, is it something you do publicly? Like, do other people know when you do it, or is it private? You can do it publicly or privately. Most people, I would say, do it privately. Balancing your checkbook. Nope. You need at least two people to do this. Oh. You need to this is tough. Just a heads up. This is this is tough. You do something. It. No, no, it's nothing physical like that. You started to say I do it. Um, I would say you probably do it more than I do, and you do it especially when you don't need to. Well, overthinking everything. Over. That's a good. <laughs> that's a good answer because you do do that. But no, it's not overthinking everything. Hmm. Who would I do it with? You said you need two people. Everyone. I just see you. Overthinking could lead to this. Oh. Worrying all the time about you're, everything. You're getting closer. <laughs> Worrying could lead to this. Apologizing. Yes. <laughs> so relatable. That's me. <laughs> Women think they need to apologize more than men, and they do it more often than men. 
So, like I said, I only do it when the situation calls for it. And But you do it probably more than you should. Yep, you nailed it. You nailed it. Okay, let's keep going. Men are three and a half times more likely to be charged with this offense than women. I will keep the answer. If you get close, I'm going to give it to you because this is a specific crime. Men are three times more likely to be charged with this offense than women. What is it? Stealing a car. No, but you're close. You're very close. Well, so it has to do with stealing? Maybe. Or vehicles? Maybe. Breaking a car's window. Breaking somebody else's window. No, but you're close. Keep going, Ooh, keep, go, keep, keep going down the path. Okay, so something with a car. Keying somebody's car. Are you kidding me? Women are way more likely to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> Men are not like, I'm going to key his car. I'll show him. Women are like, I'm going to key the beep out of his car. That's true. He, he, um, I can't believe he, he got back together in a friendship with Steph. I'm keying his car. <laughs> no, that's, that's a fair point. Something with a car, though, yeah? Yeah. Why did you laugh? Just the way you said it. Something with oh. a car, though, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, siphoning gas out of the engine. Or the gas tank. <laughs> no. No. Something with somebody's... So you're doing it to somebody else's car. I didn't say that. Crashing your car. No. Getting an accident. No, this is this no, this is charged. This is a cuz you can crash your car and not be charged with anything. This is an offense. So like keying someone's car is a an offense. So is the answer. But crash Running somebody over with your car. <laughs> no, but you are getting close. Hitting a pedestrian that's outside the crosswalk. No. No. <laughs> you got to be a little bit closer than that, but you are getting closer. Mm. Hot wiring a car. No, now you're getting further away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, now you have to give me more specific hints. Is it something you do to your own car or somebody else's? Um, it's not necessarily something you do to your car. It's some it's it's something you do involving a car. Ooh. Involving a car. Not walking in the crosswalk and you get hit by a car. <laughs> Jaywalking. No, 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 no. You're getting further. Stay in the car. Stay in the car. So you're inside the car. Yes. Is it like doing something inappropriate in the car? In a parking lot? What? <laughs> no. I told you I'd never give you... Your mind goes there, not mine. This is a hard one. What else can you do to a car that's bad? Not to a car. Using. You're doing it inside the car. Right, using a car. Using. Transporting something illegal. No. Open container. No. Open container in the car. No. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you like one or two more guesses, and then we're gonna be done with this. Um, Kate. Hold on, I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll tell you where you were close. You're close with like running pedestrians off the road or hitting someone the crosswalk. You're close. Those aren't it. But you're close with that. Think of that. Think of like operating a car. And, and failing to use your blinker. No. Bad merging. No, think, I see that. I mean, here, okay. You're you're so close. I don't know if you're actually gonna get it. So I'm gonna say you got this 50%. Is it speeding? No, but that could be a part of it. Alright. So I'm gonna give you like, hold on. I'm gonna give you just half the bell. I gave you <laughs> okay. I gave you I gave you half the bell. Uh, reckless driving. Oh, oh man, I was way too specific. Yeah, so like <laughs> hitting people in the crosswalk, like that's like vehicular manslaughter or attempted murder with a vehicle or something like that. But like reckless driving could be like not merging properly, speeding, like all that stuff could be included with reckless driving. Right. Um, so like I said, you get half a bell. That's not bad. Okay, that was, that was okay I'll take it. Yeah, that's a tough one. All right, uh, we will see you guys for the big Friday show uh, tonight. You can actually join me on our Facebook page as we meet Megan Farrell. 
uh, Farrell, excuse me, Megan Farrell. Uh, she's going to be the next person on our new live series. She'll be performing some songs, having a good time. So we'll see you guys tonight starting at 8 for live on the Puff and Steph Facebook page. Uh, Megan Farrell will be performing live. All right, we will see you guys tomorrow. Enjoy your day. It's the Puff and Steph Podcast.